I have a fun um, card I'm going to show you today. It's actually the second or first, depending on when I post them and when you see them. Um, but I'm going to use this set, Fable Friends. Um, and if you've seen the other video, I think it's a sleeper set because when you got your occasions catalog, it was Christmas time and we were not thinking of spring, we weren't thinking of Easter, we weren't thinking of little ducks in raincoats, um, which is what my other video is. So let me show you a couple of cards that aren't the ones I'm making today. Here's one that's got a little bunny. This was not designed by me. I made it, but it was a shoebox swap. Um, my girlfriend Heather made this one. Or designed this one I made it hers was colored better than mine because you know sometimes when you get together and you stamp with other people it's like you've never stamped before um, this is the other one that if the video has not posted because um, I'm recording them both so I don't know which one will go first but this one does have a video coming because what says spring more than some ducks in raincoats or geese I'm not sure if they're ducks or if they're geese this one is also on Facebook no, that one's not on Facebook. I, the one I'm doing now was my Facebook Live. So the one I'm going to show you now is um, I'm going to use these little cards that are in the catalog, the Occasions catalog. They're super cute, and they're little note cards. They come in a set. You can get. They come with big ones and little ones. And the most fun part about them is they come with little matching envelopes or big matching envelopes because they're in a set. So you get the little ones. The little note cards have. These cute little envelopes. So when I started the card, it was to make these cute little note cards. But then when I was all said and done, the card was so cute that, um, and it has quite a big bow, <laughs> it wasn't going to fit in the darling little envelope. So stay tuned for the project that will use the envelope that no longer goes with the card. So we're going to do a card on top, which I haven't done one of those for a while, where you put where the card note card opens on top of a larger card. So it is a bigger card. Um, so let me move the camera down and I'll show you. The card doesn't take long. If you've seen the other video of the ducks, then that one I colored with the blends. This little squirrel holding a daisy, because again, what says spring more than a squirrel holding a daisy, right? But he's so teensy tiny that the blends will not work with him. So don't try. Well, you can try and then you'll say, yeah, she was right because blends bleed and he's so teensy tiny that his little fingers will bleed, his little stem on his flower will bleed and you'll just have a bloody mess and you don't want a bloody squirrel, right? So, um, because he's super fine, he's on red rubber, but you want to make sure that, um, your stamps nice and inked. And that you hold it down just for a second. So I'm going to let that dry for a second. And then on this piece here, it's going to be my background piece. This set also comes with some little grass. So I'm going to stamp it in Granny Apple Green along what will end up being the base. Oh, that's some not very good stamping there, Sherry. You get complaints sometimes because you guys want me to stamp so you can see. So here's my theory. Because I've been a demonstrator. Well, that's not any better. So my grass is just kind of wild. It needs to be cut. It's spring grass. You know how it grows all wild? But my theory is, is when I used to be a demonstrator a long time ago and YouTube didn't exist and the internet didn't exist. When I stamped at a workshop, this is how I stamped. And everybody sat around the table and they watched me. Um... And I don't have a great camera and I don't have any editing equipment. So for me to do it this way and to have my Facebook Lives, I can't set my camera. I don't have a big enough office that I have an overhead camera or an overhead stand. So that's why you guys face me. So just pretend you're at my house and you're sitting across from me. And this is how you would watch at an old-fashioned workshop if you came to my workshop in 1998. I realize you, some of you were not born in 1998. But that's how we did it back in the day. There's a happy spring. The fonts that come in this set are really pretty. So I do stamp upside down. And that's how I used to stamp when I did them at workshops. And back in the day, sometimes we would sit around the coffee table. And you know, 10 years on, I started to think, hmm, I hope that when I'm in my 50s, I'm not sitting around because it got harder and harder to stand up. So thankfully YouTube's come along and I don't sit on carpet around coffee tables anymore because that wouldn't be so great. So now I'm gonna pull my big shot up here. 
that was just a little aside while I let that stuff dry. Um, you can see I've pulled in some bright colors. We're using bright, basic, actually these are 1998 colors because there are a lot of the new in colors and those were really an ode to some of our original colors. Okay, so first I've got the linen, or the, I mean the settle, which will make your paper look like linen, embossing folder. The whole thing doesn't fit in here, but it doesn't really matter because this little back bit isn't going to be pressed, but that's okay, you won't notice it on the card. So I'm gonna send this through first and get this folder. You need this folder. It makes all of your paper look super expensive. And if you already have the big shot, then why not? Because all of your paper will look like you paid a lot of money for it. It just makes it all look really pretty. So you might as well do it, right? Okay, and then I'm gonna send this piece, which is gonna be the back panel with my um, spring grass that needs some tending to. Send that through. It just makes your paper look like that you went to a really fancy paper shop and you got some really nice paper and it's not cardstock anymore. This is our gingham paper, and it is in the Cajuns catalog, so if you want it, you need to, I think it's on back order right now, but it's coming back in, so you don't have to worry about it, you can get it. Send that through. I could send all of the pieces through, but these other two are mostly just in there for um, background colors, so you don't see enough of them. But hey, if you want to do it, go right ahead because I give you full permission. If it wasn't for time on the video, I might do it too. So then this is one of our little frames from one of the sunshine sets, and I will put it down below in the supplies. My cats are running around. They couldn't make an appearance when I was stamping my cat video. They had to wait till it was the squirrels. But this frame is perfect perfect size and just the whimsy of it. it looks spring. Um, this set also has words if you were going to a baby shower. Um, and I'm going to pop it upside down because you know me, I don't like to spend my time poking these things out. I'd rather let the big shot do the work for me. So one more roll through and I won't have to do any poking. They'll all fall out on their own. So that's all the big shot work that we need. Now we just have to color this little guy and put it all together. So see, pull those right out. It These look like they didn't fall out, but that's the way they're designed. It's a stitched frame. So these are designed to look stitched and they do stay in here. So you can take your brush and just roll, roll those over. So then to color this, I'm going to use the markers, but I'm not going to use them. A couple of them I'm gonna use direct to paper. Um, but for the most part, that's too strong of a color. So what I do is I take one of my blocks, and these are what we mount our stamps on. So I'll tell you the colors I'm using. This is Pineapple Punch, and it I'm going to use direct to paper. And I'm just going to color the inside of my daisy. And then this is Mango. And I'm, oh, it's like a kid tying their shoes. You would think half the time you'd open the right end. But no, and I'm just gonna dot, it has little daisy seeds in there. Okay, now the rest of these I've colored on here. If you're doing this in a class, I will tell you that I've made this card now several times and this is all my original smudgies on here. I would also like to tell you that I don't know where my navy pen is, um, but this is the one that probably came out in about 1998. I don't know, it's my original marker. Um, and it still works. So here's the navy, so this is what I do. I which my colors on there. If you're a demonstrator and you do this at class, just take a Sharpie and write Knight of Navy, blueberry, um, caramel, suede, red, the colors that you are. And when you're done, just take a, oh, uh, word. My migraine medicine makes me think, not think of words I don't use all the time. A magic eraser. And that, um, that will take that right off of there. The Sharpie that you wrote the names on. So I'm gonna do my squirrel first. Get some scrap paper over here to smudge off. So 
I probably do need some more caramel. It's, I mean crumb cake. It's actually the one that gets used the most. So just draw your color on here. It will stay wet for days. It will stay wet for years. You can go back in a year and whatever you haven't used, just pick it right back up with a blender pen. Now your Whisper White Paper will, will run or pill if you do too much. So what you're doing is as lightly as possible taking your blender pen and just brushing the color over the top of it. Now when you color these tiny little areas, here's a tip for you. Do one area at a time. Like when I pick up this, this time I'm gonna get this hand. This tiny little squirrel hand. This time I'm gonna get this tiny little squirrel hand. Because each time you pick up color, it has like a different color to it. Like you may have accidentally got more color, less color. And so it makes those, that hand look like that hand. And it does a, na a little bit of natural shading for you. And he's teensy, teensy, teensy. Um, and again, you're, don't press hard on the paper. Just kind of brush the color on because you don't want the color, the paper to start to pill up. And if you do too much, then your paper will start to wad up on itself. You could use, um, in fact, the first one I did was on shimmer paper because shimmer paper is my favorite. And normally I like that color. Move this in case it's in the way. Um, normally I, shimmer color is my favorite color, but when I put it with these bright colors and his little white daisy and little white hat, mm, I wasn't, I was like, oh yeah, sometimes the shimmer paper fails me. And that was one of the times it did. did. Now I'm getting this suede in these places where he's got shading on him. I'm going to pull and I'm kind of not, I'm dabbing. So then I went back to the Whisper White. Again, you could use watercolor, but it's not true white. And for this card, because he's got a white daisy and his white hat, I wanted the white. And with these bright colors, if you went with other colors, if you were doing it in pastel, then you might want to go to one of the other papers that withstands the watercolor a little bit more. So again, just kind of smudge these on here. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take the brush tip of my crumb cake and just kind of lightly brush some color on here. And this will give, I don't want a lot, I just want a tiny bit. And then I'm gonna be able to work that in for a little, my third layer of shading. So with this one you have to press a little bit harder and you really don't want your paper to pill. Get a little bit more here. Kind of pull it all in. This is one of those times when coloring upside down because he looks funky to me. I have to upside down squirrel. It's hard to shade when you're coloring upside down, but we're good. There we go. Let me just kind of pull in some more. There we go. Okay, now I'm going to move to his jacket, which I'm going to do in, I wanted to do it mostly navy, but what happened is it's so teensy tiny, there was not any chance to um, shade it. So instead, I started with blueberry, and what I barely picked up, if you saw, barely just dot some color on here and then use it till it runs out. He's got his tiny little shoulder up here. That way when it runs out, let me see if, is that his jacket? Yeah, sometimes I have to look at it to see what I'm coloring. That's jacket right there. So that gave me a base, because if you put too much navy on here, then the black goes away because he's so tiny. Now again, just a dot of that And then I can kind of pull that into it. And the blueberry is going to do the shading for me. Again, you don't have enough. You don't want, there's not enough, a lot of space. And you don't want it to rip your paper. If you make it all go too dark, then it's going to look so close to the color of the brown and the black, you're going to lose your definition. 
and he's so cute you don't want to do that okay so that's all you need for that then we will move on to let's do his leaf we'll start with the greeny apple brush that on there and then just a dab of the garden green Go over that, and then for his red, he needed some more color. Obviously, he's kind of he needs something to brighten him up. So I went with red on his bow, which I may actually need to add. Nope, he just needs the tiniest little touch because his bow is so tiny, teensy, teensy, tiny. So there, our little sailor squirrel has a red bow, but I felt like it still needed a tiny bit more of red. So what I did was I just took this and I just gave him a little red stripe on his hat. And just freehand that. It's super easy. Another tip when you get the color off with your blender pen, you just wipe it on scrap paper, but just wipe till it's gone. Don't wipe and wipe and wipe and wipe because the more you wipe, you're, get, you're losing the fluid out of your pen. So there he is. Okay, now we just have to stick it all together and we're done. This has a little bit of ribbon on it. Like I said, that's why I couldn't put it in my little note card. So let's start with the different layers. Let's do this one first. There's my mistake. That's why God gave us two sides of cardstock, so we could always make a mistake and have another side. Then we're going to put this piece on here. Our fun summer and you know which side do you like you like the small you like the large every time you flip it over and you're like yeah I think I'm gonna go for the small so get that on there and then the really super fun thing about this die is that you can poke your ribbon through it so this is our night of navy gingham so just Make it teeny, and this one that goes right here in the middle. Pull that through there, and then back up here. And it shreds the end of your ribbon a little bit, so just trim it when you get to the other side. And you want enough of this to go around and be able to tie a bow all my markers on top of my scissors. The markers you can get in Color Family or you can get the one whole giant set. And there's so many things that you can do with the markers if you don't have the markers. Um, and they're like having the ink pads because you can stamp. You can use them for ink pads. So if you don't have all of the ink pads yet, it's a great thing to have because then you have all the ink pad colors. It's not necessarily the fastest way to stamp, but if you need a color and you don't have it, then at least you have it. But you, then you can also watercolor with everything because the full set of markers and a blender pen and you're good to go. You have them all. And if you don't have a block that you want to do, the other thing that you can um, scribble your stuff on is just a styrofoam plate. And the same thing, you can write the name with just a Sharpie. Okay, so I've got this tied this direction because I want my bow to go parallel to my design. But you know, I just can't leave without having some tool on here because this looks like it's spring even though I said that all winter long and all fall long I just use this ribbon repeatedly all the time it's every season I don't need a super long piece this time because if you watched my um or if you watched that rain coat wearing geese or ducks whatever they are um cut it too small so then I just used lots. I did what I tell you not to do all of the time. Don't cut your ribbon too small. It's better to have it too long and lose a half an inch than to cut it too small and lose the giant section. So then I just tied it all on here. So now I've got this doubled over and I'm going to tie a knot here. And if you see me do it, it does stick to itself but you just pull it.
So this one's going the opposite way and you can pull it tight because it's kind of stretchy. Okay, now this knot, this bow, I want to go this way. And this one's actually longer, so I'm going to flip it this way. Oh, this way was right. So do your gingham bow this way. Yesterday it was beautiful and sunny here in Indy, and I had the windows open, which, you know, it's not one of those days that if it was fall, we'd be like, close the windows. Oh, no, it was in the 70s, so we'd probably have the windows open. Um, it's 37. It was like 73 yesterday. It's, I can look at my clock now. It's 3 o'clock in the afternoon, and it's 37. So you know, it's that time of year when we have a beautiful day, and then we don't. Okay, so there's your, your parallel ribbon. And so you've got all this. So now just bring it back around this way. And whichever side's longer, that's another ribbon tip. Because a lot of you say, oh, I love your ribbons, but I can't do that. Yes, you can. It just takes practice. Whichever side's longer, that's the one that you want to be that's going to end up um, wrapping around. So if you have to flip your card the other way, which is what I just did that, that way, that's the one that you're going to have the extra to do your loop. Because if you use your short side to do your loop, then your short side gets even shorter because you just use some of it to go the other way. So now we've got that. So just separate this out. And it does, when you pull it, it kind of smushes back. So you just have to like fluff it back open. Because it, it's like net, so it just sticks on itself. But it just opens right back up. See, super cute and it's, if you, if you just need to buy a spool and just work on practicing a few of them, just practice a few. It's one of those things where it just takes a little bit of practice. So here's a, I think that this is Lemon Lime Twist. And I actually stamped with Granny Apple. But you know, if we have just one more shade of spring green in here. Looking at it now, it's a different color than my original card, but that's okay. Green is green, right? It looks okay. And this is what I meant by a card on top of a card. So you still have some place where it says happy spring and some place to write, but the whole card doesn't open. You just have a different opening. And we used to do these a lot. A lot of what's old is new. I've seen those um, fold up baskets where you make a square and you score, score, and you cut, cut into little things and they flip up a lot with this set. And that, um, like back in the day, like 1998 workshop, you would have made one of those because those were our jam. We did those all of the freaking time. Actually, this is the one that I did on Facebook Live. No, that's my original. Here's the one I get. This is why I end up with so many of my cards. But here you go. I hope you like that. So cute. But look, you could just get these and you could just have a spring stamp day. So why don't you order this set, have it all ready, and then, you know, like right now we say, oh, it's springtime and when it snows again in a couple of weeks because, hey, if you live in the Midwest, it's bound to happen. You know, we're going to have a, we have a fake spring and then we have, um, oh yeah, remember, it's still not summer. We'll have one of those days, but you can get together with your girlfriends and you can make a whole mishmash of these beautiful spring baby fun cards. And then next thing you know, summer will be here. So I hope you enjoyed this card. Um, and this video will post, and I am working on one with the rabbit. I will tell you, oh, here they are. Um, I'll zoom you back up here real fast. Um, nope, I'm not going to be in the frame. So we have these little, um, to get down, these little treat cups that are in the catalog. It, they're in the occasions catalog. If you used to go to the drive-in, if you're as old as me, um, they used to give us ice cream with wooden spoons. And that's what they remind me of. So I'm going to try to come up with a little Easter thing for these. I'm going to try to use the basket weave. I'm going to um, do a couple more things with this set before I move on to my master list. And that was the other thing. And I meant to say that on my Facebook Live. On my Facebook, I posted a 
when I crop this, I'm going to get out a list of all of the stamps that I'm going to work with for the rest of the year, but it was way too long. I don't have that much time. So if you want to go to Facebook and you have a request, go over there and you can make a request from the list of the stamps that I have. If there's something you would like to see me use on my YouTube channel. So, um, I would say have a happy St. Patrick's day, but I don't think this is going to post before Sunday. It's Friday now, but everybody have a good day. Bye.